hey, check it out. It's Vidivo Live. We're on the road again. And we're in done again. Been there, done it again. <laughs> no, but you know the story. You've heard it before. You've seen it. You know, a church. An old church. A church that was started hundreds of years ago. You know, a testimony to the community, a witness of those who had been participating in a farmland, that it had a story, a backstory behind it, that it had a future and a destiny, that it stands the test of time, even though its foundation be upon stones and not deep into the bedrock. Though it stands on the ground, yet God has used it as a way marker, as a witness, as a magnificent landmark to the people around to have seen the things that they have seen, to have heard the things they have heard, to have watched what has occurred at Union Church, as it has become in all ways what God intended it to be. And you see, that's what was always interesting to me, was that you can't always determine what God intends for something to be. You can make up your own ideas of what you think you want it to be. And that's what's happened recently. You see, the Union Church now has had some makeovers and some makeup done on it. Now, unfortunately, it stopped. And that was how it became Dunnigan Christian Community Church. And that was during the time that I was there and a friend of mine as the pastor. So I wanted to share with you the beginning, as I did in the previous Video Live, the Dunnigan series. But I want to share with you now the end of the story, or at least what I knew it was. Let's take a good shot of this for a minute. I like to show this picture because it always is awesome to me. It's like, well, there you go. And you see, most of what was on the bottom is painted over as a Calvary Chapel outreach. Yes, Calvary Chapels fail. Oh my God, they do really? <laughs> well, anybody that's been part of Calvary Chapel since the beginning, we know the rest of the story. Boy, that's no big shock. But the beauty of what God has done, what God intended, is that God always receives the glory and the honor. Irregardless, regardless of anything we think that we want done, or that we think is being accomplished, God's will is always done. God always accomplishes His purposes and His design. And speaking of purposes and design, unfortunately, I'm sitting on the steps of the church as you go into the church. And this is, on the very footsteps of the door of the church, is where the church ended. This is where God spoke to me and terminated the church months before, weeks before. Matter of fact, almost days before the pastor had already left. Now I say that because the pastor still went on with the ministry. The pastor still taught. The pastor still spoke. The pastor still led worship. The pastor was still anointed. This pastor was still appointed. But you see, here at the doors of the step, even where I'm standing now, when I came out the door, and as I am this way towards the door, and I stood under the light, I was talking to the pastor as where I'm standing now, he was standing. And he said to me, even as we had just rejoiced in some of the things that were going on, he says, you know, Michael, we won't be here very long. The Lord's leading us out. The Lord's taking us to a bigger place. The Lord is going to use in a mighty way and create a huge church, then again, to affect all of California, to affect the middle California, northern California. And he's going to do, and he kept going on and on. And the Lord spoke to me and only said one word to me. He said he's leaving. He's already gone. And when the Spirit of God spoke to me and I looked at the pastor, I realized, yeah, he doesn't know why he was sent here. He doesn't know what his purpose here for was. And he's going to discover that he never really understood why he was supposed to be here. Because you see, this area grows. This area is farmland. This area is developed. Every year, year after year, there is fruit. Every year, Year after year, farmers produce fruit. Every year, year after year, people see them come and people see them go. But the farmers, they just keep going back and they furrow the land. They water the land. 
they grow what can be grown here. They know what works and what doesn't. And you see, the Father in heaven knows what we can grow. He is the husbandman of the vine. He is the person who, reality check, gives us his Holy Spirit in order for us to grow and to develop. And one of the things that, unfortunately, happens in ministry is that sometimes pastors, sometimes teachers, sometimes men of God want more than what God wants. Sometimes they don't know what God intended to do or what God is doing with the man of God who had already retired and become no longer in the same ministry that they thought they were. Now, as far as worship was concerned, wonderful. As far as teaching was concerned, magnificent. For the early startup, it was magnificent in what God intended and what God was doing. People came to the church. People enjoyed the church. People were blessed by the church. Matter of fact, they began to grow and began to become organized. But also, when the usage became less than the purpose that it was designed, when no longer God was in control and the pastor began to manifest what he wanted to do, God didn't bless it. Matter of fact, when the church went to two churches and I helped, sadly, from that moment on, there was no longer the great joy that had started to see a hundred-year-old church with a mighty witness of God behind it that had stood the test of time, that had withered the winds, that had responded and been said that it was going to be restored to the glory with which God had once raised it up in the beginning. And a man here had been here since the beginning. Oh my God. Would he bless what we want to do? Or would he put to the test whether we would obey? I was put to the test, the challenge in ways that I was surprised to see. I was surprised to be put into a place of being submissive to the will of God and to the will of man at the same time. To stand with the man as I saw him fail. To stand with the man as I saw him fall. To stand with the man as I saw him self-destruct. Oh, maybe people would say, ah, it was awesome, you know. He was such a great worship leader. Yeah, he was. Oh, it was awesome. He was such a great evangelist. Yeah, he was. Oh, it was awesome. He was so, and yeah, he is. Because I love him. I've always loved him. And yet, when he finally had completely lost it and got in my face violently, thinking and accusing me of various things that he was going through. I cried, I wept, I saw, and I prayed for him. And I left him to his ministry, as he knew that I was going to do, because I said, you know, praise the Lord, you know, I'm with you, I, you know, I'll support you in everything you do, you know, that's no problem there. I've always have, and I always will, and I have since the beginning, and I will in the end. But I said, now it's time for us to go different ways, you know. You can have the keys of the building, the church that I live in. That you can go on from the church that you started, you know, and you can start moving it out and moving it out and doing things. But the Lord's moving me on, and I need to go where God wants me to go. I need to do what God wants me to do, even as God wants you to do. And I said, I love you. You know, I said, I'm, I'm with you, but, you know, we're going to move into Sacramento. We're going to leave Dunnigan behind. We're going to let the Lord do according to what he chooses to do. But God has told me, I have finished the work I came to do as a missionary. I have opened up the first church, Dunnigan Christian Fellowship. I have helped open up the Grove and paid for with my own income for this time that we've been here, living in the church, for the ministry to prosper, for the ministry to grow. And I have stood and watched as the ministry has grown. Now it's time for the ministry to stand on its own. So God bless you. Be at peace. And let's stand back and see what the Lord will do with us. And so as I left, and I was blessed, sadly I knew you know, that the man of God, the man that I've loved, the man that I saw in the beginning come to Klamath Falls, bless Klamath Falls, raise up many ministries in Klamath Falls, and retire from Klamath Falls, leave Dunnigan behind, though he had said he never would. Praise the Lord.
you never know what God will do. You never know what a blessing God brought that man through. You don't realize how much God has taught him through this and how much God has revealed to me. The blessings and the glory and the honor sometimes there is in seeing ministries fail when God wants it to be so because even in failure you'll find God is a success. Jesus was and is and always shall be highly, highly and very well spoken of in Dunnegan. And the worship and the praise and the teachings and the things that went forth from this community were awesome. And they've gone on to do what they are meant to do as the Dunnegan city itself is drying up and becoming smaller and smaller and smaller. So if somebody asked me one time, do churches fail? They said, you know, in the book of Revelation that there is a church that failed. And quite frankly, it's it's true why it does and how it does. And that's why we're doing the series on when churches fail. And why this particular video is going to be one of the beginning ones for failing. But at the same time, it's going to be the third one in the series of Dunnegan about the good. Because you see, failure can be good when God causes it to be so. And failure can also be a learning lesson and an object lesson when someone is there to explain the good, the glory, and the wonders that God can bring when you can look back on and realize God from the beginning, God from the end, God all the way through, always is working according to His will and not our will to be done.